Duplo. Hello, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm always good. Always good. good. It's so good to actually talk to you because we're always chatting and everything. And we we had never spoken face to face. And I didn't even realize it till last week. And you you were saying, well, one of these days we got to talk. And I was like, well, dang, we haven't talked, have we? Mm -hmm. No, so, our networks kept bumping and they kept going know, over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I was like, well, come on my show and then we can talk for a long time and then other people can be helped also. Absolutely. So Absolutely. everybody, I want y'all to meet Michael Whitlow. He is Marine veteran, right? Right. Got to make sure I get the right brand. <laughs> I'll um, <unfriend> and, you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the owner of Vet Builder, vetbuilder.com, which is a handyman, but but not just that. It's like remodeling and renovation, historic renovation and everything, right? Right. I, I will tell people remodeling, handyman and design. Okay. Um, we, we cut our teeth doing preservation work. Yeah, and I've I seen I have seen photographs of your work and it's beautiful. Thank you. Did so you see my one list? of these days, I just need to like figure out a way to get you to come down here and like have some beer or something. Just come do some work for me. <laughs> Lure you down. <laughs> I, I heard that author before. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so tell everybody about your business and how you got started in it first. Oh, uh, we originally our original company was in two thousand six. The market changed, and then I went to work for a company uh, called Mr. Handyman, which is a franchise, and uh, learned a completely different business model, the whole service side. Uh, fast forward um, about six years, it's be six year, it was six years ago, a couple weeks ago, we started vetbuilder.com. I had a van, one guy came out of the gates. We did, you know, first six months, we did six figures, and it was just, Wow, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. great. Well, I I have to say, you didn't, you weren't in construction or the trades before you were a cook before, right? So you can't hide that from people. Well, I, I did. To see you. Thumper came to see you. Oh, I locked my dogs you. away so they, would, they wouldn't run up and get me. Oh, um, I wouldn't dare. So yeah, so not to get off topic, but I think that's really cool that you weren't always in the trades, that you mm -hmm. were a chef and all this stuff. So people out there, you can change your career at any time if you want. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. And you know what? The the chefing days, it, I had great Facebook po pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I always wonder why you're always posting photographs of food. And a lot of people do that, but yours looked extra good. So yeah, I didn't realize why. Back. So... Back. You said in the first six months you did six figures. Mm -hmm. That's great. But you did a lot of planning ahead of time, right? You didn't just say, I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Uh, and No, no, no. I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a person that does their homework. Okay. I, I look at things. Uh, I was working for a different company. I looked at their business model. I actually went through the process of becoming vetted to buy a territory myself. And it, it occurred to me why do I want to spend all of this money to, to only be in one area? And wow. uh, the answer to that was a CRM marketing, you know, all the things that, that it took, that's taken me five years to, to sort of get my processes in order and, mm -hmm. and figure out what the direction is. And when I do open up another location, it's, it's turnkey. Yeah. So, and that stuff is of value. And if it's somebody it that knows, they either only want to have that limited territory or that everywhere they go, they want to have it mapped out and they just keep doing it. That's okay. But if you're more of a, I don't want to say free spirit because that sounds like somebody it's like, la, la, la. but if you're more like your own person and want to do it your way, it's not mm -hmm. the way to go. No, it's not. No. And, and, and nothing against franchise. Right. Yeah. Because I've, I've used that information as the template to take that builder to the next level. So mm -hmm. it's great for people that want what to, who want that small area and, and some yeah. of these areas are large and you manage that and then you go, you go buy another one. Um, yeah. And, and the franchise model is successful because you do absolutely. have that proven template and you have all the pieces that work together, the CRM and everything. But for mm -hmm. people out there like you, if you want to be in control of everything, those tools are out there. You just have to get hooked up with the right <laughs> people to help you 
put it all together. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so when you first got started, how did you get your first clients? First clients, the it's kind of an odd story. We lived in a, in a, in a development, okay, one of those big suburbs that you see in big cities. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started doing work on the weekends, working with a buddy of mine, Mm -hmm. And um, it just steamrolled. We we did a an advertisement in the local paper, uh, the HOA paper booklet they gave us, and it just it just blew up. It's people. Yeah, it's the kind of work that everybody needs. I you know I have a product or a service that absolutely every single plant, person on the planet, if they if they flush a toilet, I have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and it, the thing is, a lot of people can do it themselves, but they don't want to. They're no, busy no. or whatever. I mean, my husband can fix everything, but it's the last thing he wants to do. Well, you know, you know it's in these developments where you're living in four hundred thousand dollar houses. You've got dual incomes. You've got kids. You've got all of these things. You've got soccer. Yeah. They want they want to be able to call somebody. In my yeah. case, they email me, send me some mm -hmm. pictures, and then. They know a guy's gonna show up in a in a clean shirt. He's gonna be clean shaven, wear a belt, put booty on, booties on, mm -hmm. and come with force. Yeah, it. you come in, you do the work, you you leave, and everything is better than it was before you came in, and you don't leave any traces of yourself behind like mm -hmm. people used to do, where they'd come in and track dirt in and everything. Oh, absolutely, we, and we try. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say that everyone everyone's a success, but I will say. Yeah that I've never received a, a bad review. And that's not because people didn't like me. It's because I fixed it to a point where they were like, okay, we're done. I'm just not going to call you again. <laughs> so yeah. 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 I mean, and yeah, shit happens. So, shit happens. Yeah. You know, I'm, so, I'm working yeah. on your house. I open the wall up and it's a mess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you don't know what's behind that wall until you open it. Yeah. Right. So, but, when oh sorry go ahead oh no no okay we're cool. well i was just gonna say so when you started doing that with your friend were y'all just kind of doing it as a hobby on a whim or did you already know that you wanted to go take this further and you just were taking this little bite at one time no no it was it was always it was always a goal okay. my, my goal has always been a national brand um, okay so when we started even though we only had one van we still had the uniforms. We had the invoices. We so even when y'all were doing just the weekend things, mm -hmm, didn't you, you started doing? Okay, so you were treating it as a full blown business, mm -hmm. like it was your. That was all yeah. you had from the beginning. Yeah, the, my buddy had his own business. So oh, okay, was, okay, it wasn't yours at that. Okay, sorry. No, no, um, okay. no. I we we when when we when I finally pulled the trigger, it was. It was a fully functioning company. Okay. So, a lot of work. Sorry. <laughs> hey, got oh, her, yeah. She's got to get her two cents worth in. That's right. She said, Mommy, just rub my butt. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, y'all, you got started that way. And initially, it was through ads and regular, just word of, like mouth. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. It, it and how did. How did you get into networking and how did you network initially back a few years ago? We, when, <laughs> like when you I weren't did. doing it right, when you no, were no. networking. No, I was doing Facebook and, and I was getting a lot of. Yeah, but before that, weren't you like going to chamber meetings and just giving people your business cards? Oh, you never did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with going to chamber meetings, but people think. I go, I give people my card and that's networking. So, okay. So you, so you started out from the beginning networking through social media. Absolutely. Facebook. Okay. Facebook for probably 80, initially 85% of my, of my income was 100% from Facebook. Okay. Now was it Facebook ads or nope. was it, okay. So tell us how you did that. What, what we did was we started out doing before and after shots. Okay. And then we used, uh, a little bit of updates, stuff like that, and I and I kept it and I kept it rolling. Um, 
I'm, I'm very, very specific about my brand, always have been. <laughs> so I live by the, the three P's. I don't talk about politics, proclivities, and Pope. Yeah, Period. right. I mean, a little joke here and there. And I also don't use uh, my business page as a, as a launching pad for other big projects that other people would have. I, I keep it. These are my friends. These are my, this is my network. These are the yeah. people I and it just sort of snowballed off that. And um, probably f it was about four, about five years ago, about a year after we opened up, I came up with this idea of, okay, well, I saw how Mr. Handyman's doing it. The numbers are there. The locations are there. So all of that information is there. What do I do with it? Mm -hmm. And I went and talked to two people that are probably the two smartest people I know, Madonna and her husband, Al, who actually speak, uh, he teaches business with Capella. You know, Madonna. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> my, I, my other one. I know I had to get that in there. You know, see my network, Madonna. Yeah. Um, and I, and I remember like it was yesterday when I got done, we, we talked for hours about what could happen. Oh my God. What about this? And we just, and then I went out and sat in my truck and I, and I, and I just sat there and I'm like, shit, uh, I need to talk to somebody. And, and that's when it started. I, of course, being a vet, I looked at more vet centric sites first mm -hmm. um, because it, it's, it's an easy handshake, you know, the, Hey, Marie. Yeah. Well, wait a minute though. So you talked with her for a long time and then you went out to the car and what do you mean that you said, I need to talk to somebody? It, it was it was that moment when I sat back and I thought, okay, well, well, how can what's the next step? Oh, okay, okay. You know, the next step, how do I? You know, I, I know for a fact that I don't know enough of anything to take this. You, you just oh, don't. So y'all, you were there. not talking with them about their project. You were talking about business. Business. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I had a disconnect. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so they got your line going. And then you realized that you were at that next inflection point mm -hmm. and you needed to figure out your next step. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what then? Huh? So <laughs> you can't understand my accent. I said, so what then? Oh, what then? We just started networking on a, on a very small level. You, you know, networking is a, it, it's an ever changing and growing process. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, in, I hate when people, in my opinion, it's predicated on a mindset. Networking is a skill. Yeah. And to, to, to do that effectively, you have to start. And when you start, you know, being the nice guy, honest guy, congeal guy, the guy that's funny, mm -hmm. doesn't change anything because everyone's, everyone's using the same platform. So yeah. mitigating all of the people that want to sell you something or the, the one hour phone calls or then the, the coursework and the eBooks and mm -hmm. you know, spent a lot of money initially. Um, yeah. you, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And then once, once your network starts to grow and you network up, things start to change. You, you start surrounding yourself with people that are actually doing things. And there's the data that shows, okay, he runs a business. These are the things that are working for him and you create relationships. Yeah. And, and that, for me, that has propelled what I'm doing tenfold just by being friends with people and having real conversations. Right. And, it, and when you talk about networking, a lot of people don't understand you're not just networking to get business. It's not no. like you're out there looking for people to sell your product or service mm -hmm. to. You're mostly networking to learn from other professionals, pick each other's brains, and Absolutely. everybody gets better, like the mastermind groups. Right. You know, when when you join some of those groups, there's there's initial a high impact, and then a lot of these groups sort of sizzle away. Yeah. You know, kind of just, and then they're done. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's not how. That's not the information I want. Right. You know, I have to be around people that are constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. Like a good example is is Chris McPhee. Yeah. Chris is always doing something. He is smart. Hey, right. Smurf. And, and Greg boot is another one. Um, yeah. These guys are constantly evolving. They're changing their brands. They're yeah. implementing things. Uh, Donnell Johns, another one. 
Veterans Grow America. I mean, mm-hmm. I want to have a location all over the place. He's in an organization that is actually going to other places. So Right. Yep. It's, so he, he's a good connector and he knows the areas and absolutely. Yeah. So it, it's, 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 the, it's constantly working. And, and the people that I trust, the people that I talk to all the time, and we talk numbers like, you know, this was X amount of Z, mm-hmm. but the interesting part about that is, is you've got a, if you've got a company with 30 employees, you have the exact same problem I have with my two employees. Right. So there's a, there's a, there's a baseline there that makes it very easy to sort of learn from, from other folks in those areas. Yeah. And even if it has, even if you're in different industries at the bottom yeah. of everything, people are people and you have the same kinds of underlying issues. Right. I, I may, I have, I know of two people in the trades that's that, that I actively engage with. Okay. Uh, everybody else is in a different industry. All of them. All of them. Uh huh. And that's well, and, and I think that's valuable because it is when you always stay in your own little bubble, mm-hmm. and that's everybody that you're talking with is in that. Then you're always kind of thinking the same way. You're not learning from other industries. You're not mm-hmm. thinking about different about things differently. So if you're in an industry, you might be talking to somebody who, like Greg, is in the jewelry industry. Right. They're there are things in the jewelry industry that are relevant to yours. It's both craft, both craftsman type things. And absolutely, so there is a lot to learn there. Yeah, it's, it, there is. And then like say, going back to Chris, when I met him, Oh God, I think it was two years ago. I had no idea about all of the other social media stuff because you I, mean I, that was out there for you to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The content and, and and all that kind of stuff. Being able to hear about that and see an app, see it in application was uh, an eye opener. Yeah. So in other words, you met somebody and you got to and you could see him doing it and him applying it. It wasn't some guru out there that was mm-hmm. trying to sell you a course or whatever. And no. you know, you go learn it. This was somebody that you could actually see the practical application that you could learn from. Oh, I, you know. And it's it's hard to have a conversation when you talk about marketing because there are the gurus, there are the coaches, the mentors, mm-hmm. and I'm not taking away from any of them. I mean, yeah. Don't get me wrong, because the the ones that I will network up to are absolutely their their weight in gold. Right. And and I have spent a significant amount of money chasing that. Mm-hmm. And the the difference is now is I don't need the work. I have a successful brand. And I'm to the point now where I want to where I want to grow it. So yeah. now there's the goal is always there. It's just the implement impl- the making it happen has changed. Yeah. And so there is tremendous value in in that type of thing. The problem is is that is a prevalent business model that's out there, mm-hmm. and everyone uses it. It's a, an intellectual MLM, and they it, people hate that, but it's the truth. I've got the Amway. And then I want all my people to bump me back up. Mm-hmm. And you see in those groups, you see the same people and then yeah. their networks. Okay. They've got 4,000 people in their network, but there's no real engagement to that. Mm-hmm. And there's no engagement on that level. You, you, I talked to one person who I had was very respected and they basically point out, you know, I don't even do any of that. And then it was this a couple of years. And I'm like, well, damn, you know, here I am all posting content to, to get your attention. And then, and it's not them. It's either them. it's automation and or combination of automation and other people that are just doing it for them. Yeah. So, so you know, it's a, it was a learning thing. And then yeah. it just strengthened my resolve to, to, to create those relationships. Mm-hmm. And, well, and that's another thing about when you are online and you are actually being yourself. Mm-hmm. And I, I get really sick of the word authentic, but it's true. When you are being authentic, when right. your self is coming through, then people also will know that it's you and that it's not some automation thing. So, for example, Steve Sims, you know, who Steve is and he's my coach. You're going to know if Steve is the one that posted it because there's going to be a typo or something. <laughs> he had one the other day. <laughs> he doesn't care. You know, so if it was totally perfect, you'd be like, that ain't Steve, you know, um, and so 
that's something for people to remember that you shouldn't be out there trying to be somebody that you're not. You shouldn't be trying to be too slick or whatever. You want people to know who you are and accept you for who you are because then they will want to work with you, right. not who you're trying to act like. I always put it in the in in the perspective of dating. I'm like, you know, when you're dating or when you're younger and you're just trying to date or whatever, you know, yeah. for girls, you go out, you, you know, you got all your fancy clothes and makeup and you're trying to stay skinny and you're trying right. to act all whatever. And you might even go to places you don't even like. You don't like to dance or you don't like to drink or whatever because you're trying to get that right person or the right date. And guys do their own version of it. But you can't do it. Can't <laughs> I did my hair it. just for you. Oh, my God. And I love it. <laughs> um, but you can't fake it for so long. And, yeah. you know, and, and if you find somebody that way, oh, I'm sorry, but they're not the right person for you anyway. And you're not going to end up together because you're not the person that they thought that they were meeting. And it's the same thing with marketing. You have to be yourself so that you are attracting the right people to you or repelling the wrong people. Or repelling the wrong people. Uh, you know, and, and that's where I'm at. Okay. I have something. I've got a good idea. I have a track record. I have a model. Mm -hmm. So the next step is audience. Okay. Yeah. People need to know me. Mm -hmm. so we do stuff like this. Uh, and, and you work towards it and you be genuine with it. And during this whole thing, you, you constantly network with people. Mm -hmm. And for me, networking, a, a prime example, <clears throat> a good friend of mine from the Marine Corps was down here. He, uh, Keith, he uh, owns a restaurant, Flood Zone Marketplace and Brewery. All right. They were coming down here. Our schedules just, just didn't jive. I thought mm -hmm. it was going to be longer. So being active, as active as I am downtown here, I gave a call to Carrie, who owns the brewery down here. I said, hey, short notice, would you mind if my buddy came over with his wife and they saw how you run your operation? Oh, that's good. Done. Yeah. Now, the number, she said yes, and I walked away from it. Mm-hmm. It's because I care. And yeah. I think that when you when you start surrounding your pe yourself with people that are succeeding, people that are trying to do something, there is a genuine, you know, when someone succeeds in my network or in my, my circle, I'm excited about it. I'm happy about it. Yeah. And you're not just using them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. No. And you were able to help him just by opening that door, just by making that connection. Right. And someday it'll come back around, but you don't even care if it does because that's mm. not why you were doing it. No, no. It's, and, and, and I think that's the difference, but don't get me wrong. My network is, is constructed at, on a strategic level. Mm -hmm. I have people in different industries that, you know, Greg Buddha, for instance, Greg has absolutely nothing that I could use right now. You mm -hmm. know, if say for instance, this gets on someone's radar and we'll use Steve as an example because of your connection. Steve would call me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hey, nice knowing you brother, but there's nothing that you, I, I don't bring anything to the table. And even if you brought something to the table, we're in a different stage right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll talk later, yeah. <laughs> you know, but right now we're, we're getting our processes in order and we're mm -hmm. getting our, and all that. I don't, it's, it's a distraction. And I think people have a hard time understanding that that people want you to network, 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 network. And, and I agree, but you know, for the people that are actually running a business where they have people and they have responsibilities and they're, you know, still swinging a hammer, your time is limited and you have goals. And once you make the goal, then you go to the next level. And I think that gets lost on people because they either don't do their homework or mm -hmm. they're just buckshot. They're all over the place. Yeah. So, or they're out for the vanity numbers. I have X number of thousand followers mm -hmm. you know, and half of them are bots or paid for whatever, you know, right. they're not really getting any business benefit out of it, mm -hmm. but it's just a bragging thing. So, yeah. so can you share any tips for people on how you do build your network strategically? Absolutely. When like, say for instance, when I, when I, when I meet somebody, like yourself. You're, you're actually a prime example of this. 
I knew Greg Buda. I knew Greg. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. Those two got together. As a result of that, Chris got to go and film a NASCAR event. Mm -hmm. Greg's name's on the side of the car. Yeah. Who's the person putting all that together? You. Mm -hmm. You look at what you've got going on. You look at what you've done. You look at your company. You look at your network. And then it goes from there. Um, yeah. That's a, just a prime example of that. D does this mean that we're going to become best friends and I'm going to meet the Wizard of Oz? Absolutely not. Does, it doesn't mean you're going to come and remodel my house. Am I? Which one do you got? <laughs> no, for free. <laughs> oh, well. Why come on now. We have to trade something. Why do you God think you right your there. network? No, I'm just messing with you. Absolutely. <laughs> But you know, if if you want if you want to be on somebody's radar and you want to be genuine about it, then you know when you're on their page, I, I get, and you probably get five thousand more than I do. People want me to join their page constantly. Yeah. And and I'll look at it. I'll do it. I'll scan it over, and if it looks like something I might be interested in, mm -hmm. I will join, and I instantly unfollow. And yeah. Then go come Sunday or whenever I have a time, I, I look through it, and I'll pick and choose that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you, you have your prime networks and then everyone, we all have our subprime networks and there's a completely different range of talents. In yeah. And outcome. you can't be bombarded by all that stuff mm -hmm. all the time. And, you know, the, the thing about inviting people to like your pages, you know, it's nice to have those numbers that mm -hmm. people go, oh, they have ever how many people like it or follow it, but it doesn't ma mean anything if there are people that are just like doing it because they just know you. you right. know, it doesn't help your business in any way. You're much better off having 10 dedicated followers that you really have something in common with than mm -hmm. 10,000 people that just like your page because they know your mother or something like that. <laughs> You know, and it's engagement. If if you want if you want me to put the effort through to engage in your page and bump your posts and ask mm -hmm. you know, answer your content questions, then then it goes both ways. And if yeah. it doesn't, you're gone. Okay, because I have people that I do work with that we do we do work with each other and we bring our content together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as far as and I keep using the, the NASCAR connection. Networking is also a huge marketing component because now I have I have evergreen content that I can use. Brian said the car looked awesome too. Uh, <laughs> Brian Garrett, right? Yeah, yeah and, Keith is here. Keith Waybright, Donald Dotson, and and Ron Garrett, Colin's dad. Thanks, guys, right. for coming. And it did. It looked so sweet last week. It did. Man. It did. It, it did. Good. Yeah. And he's a friend of, and he's a he, and he's a Sims guy. Yeah. You know? He went to one of his events and he, yeah. he's with me as well. So there's another network connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keith was the gentleman I talked about with the flood zone marketplace and brewery. We went to boot. Oh, camp. okay. Hey Keith. Okay, cool. And so, where's his brewery? Uh, it's in uh, Maryland. Oh, okay. Maryland, Petersburg area. Okay. Yeah. Keith, he, Keith's an interesting guy because he farms 800 acres on a family farm in Gettysburg. And then he's also a, a brewmaster that he was such a brewmaster that somebody said, Hey, I like what you're doing. Let's open up this restaurant. That's awesome. So it it's farm to table. Yeah. And They're, farm to brew also. To brew, yeah. 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 So Great Kurt beer. here, Kurt and Alicia. Hey guys. And Donald's right. Donald said, I'll take 20 super fans over 2000 followers. Right. And and you know we all get those messages all the time mm -hmm. you know I can buy you I can get you 10,000 in, on um, Instagram or Twitter followers in 24 hours like oh my god go away right. you know, I don't want them I don't want to pay for them but I don't want them anyway because it's just it's just ridiculous it, it means nothing it actually is worse if somebody were to come to your page and see that you have a massive amount of followers and no engagement, right. no interaction whatsoever, that's worse than just having several people following you. Let let your content drive drive yeah. you. You know, yeah. create the right content, use it when it's appropriate, and and when you have someone like Donald Dodson with Dodson Designs, you you share that content. 
I love Donald stuff. I know oh who does God. it, right? I want those dragon wings. You know, <laughs> my husband you, probably says you already have your own damn wings. You don't need to buy any. You know, already it's, got. It's the you have to worry about. about. What? <laughs> it's the horns, not that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But my daughter and her go to the. Uh, my daughter and her husband go to those cons all the time, and every time I see his stuff, I'm always sending her pictures. Of, you know, the hats and the wings and everything. And she and her husband are just like, oh, my God. Dog. But anyway, Donald, we love your stuff. But, you know, talking about sharing and content, this is another thing that a big mistake that people make is people want to only post about themselves. And mm -hmm. constantly, yeah. every day about their product or their company. And right. that could only be like 10% max of what you're posting. You right. should Sharing useful, helpful, fun, interesting, whatever information that you think people who that you are in your network would either benefit from or enjoy a decent combination. Right. And and some of your own content that's just interesting, but isn't, you know, marketing or promotion. Mm -hmm. And then maybe 10 percent of actual promotion. Hey, right. I have such and such if anybody needs it. Because you know, it's like if you go to a, a party and you're and you meet people, you don't want to go in and stand next to the person that the whole time they're talking about themselves. You no. know? I know a bunch of people like that. <laughs> and it's, yes. And all they want to do is talk about themselves and what they do and blah 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 blah. And and everybody just wants to get away from them. Mm -hmm. And the people that everybody wants to be around are the people who are really interesting to talk with and who also listen more than they talk, which I have a big problem. That's, I have a big problem talking. So uh, a lot of times that's not me, but theoretically, <laughs> if I talk less and listen more, you know, I, I have to gab myself, like my wife will say, I'll tell her, look, I'm, I, it's only gonna be an hour. And she's like, okay. She's like, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Two hours yeah. later, I come home. I'm like, they were they were talkers. Oh you know? yeah, they yeah. Well, when we first moved back here, and you know, this is a very rural community. Our entire county only has like maybe thirty five thousand people, and right. I've been living away for a long time. And we'll, and we live. My kids were born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, a city of about a million people. So you know, people knew us in the neighborhood. You go anywhere else, you didn't see anybody you knew, and um. So we first moved back here and we go to Walmart. People would see me and, oh my God, Lisa. And we'd be talking and my kids were like, oh my God, it's like you're a celebrity or something. They were like 11 and 13. And then that wore off really quickly. Everywhere we'd go, they would be like, would you please not talk to anybody, mom? Can we just go in and leave? You know, and. Yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't go to the ice cream man store unless yeah. I know it's gonna be an hour. I'm yeah. not an hour to play. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's, so it's if a, it's interesting that conversation, that's one thing, but don't go on social media and just post about yourself. And mm -hmm. um, you know, there was this man, I don't even remember who it was, I didn't know him anyway, but I would see him on Twitter and he was elderly, but that's not an excuse because I see a lot of young people that do it too. Every single day on Twitter. Once an hour, he posted the exact same thing about how he, and it was the same word. It was just the same exact post. Right. That basically what an awesome business person he was and how he had all these decades of experience and that he could coach you or whatever it was. I don't know. Consultant. And it was just like, oh, my God, can you get me some razor blades or, you know, whatever. Can you not figure out that nobody gives a damn? And you know. No, they don't. You, you, you can see a lot of their pages and, and, and you see that a lot in the coach and the mentor mentor business. Yeah. Um, yeah. It turns me off instantly. If you've got to try that hard, then you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when we first met, we met through the team, through, through Greg Buddha, through mm -hmm. Smurf, and that's how we got acquainted. But then we started, like, we'd see each other's personal posts and, right. you know, I like this or I like that. And so... It wasn't all about me going, oh, my God, you know, Whitlow is a veteran. I got to get him to follow the team and, you know, go out there and be an advocate. And it and it wasn't and you weren't all about like, oh, you know, I got to get Lisa to 
do whatever because maybe she knows somebody that might need some housework. We just genuinely had interests in common. Right. You know, I, I don't need the work. Right. But because we genuinely have interests in common and therefore we keep interacting back and forth, mm -hmm. we end up doing this and yeah. it's fun. You know, we're not, we're neither yeah. one of us really looking to get anything out of it. It's more yeah. fun and hopefully might help some other people, but also somewhere down the line, you never know when I might know somebody that needs work up there. Or when you go national on, then you can just come in as the primary sponsor of the team. Right. Well, well, look at the, I mean, oh, look no, at you the right, right over that. Right. You, you, you look at what involvement that I've had with your organization. Okay. Yeah. My name and my company name was listed in, we are the mighty. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it 1.4 million people? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's true. I had forgotten about that. And, and I, didn't. I didn't do Thank that. You. <laughs> but, and you know, the thing is that, not to toot my own horn, mm. but that's the kind of thing that we all need to think about more is when I'm talking with somebody, anybody, media or whoever, about what I'm doing, how can I share it with mm. other people and bring other people up with me? And so it's important to our team it's very, very important to us that we do help give exposure to the veteran and military spouse owned companies that are supporting the team. Right. Or even if they're not supporting the team, we want people to support veteran and military spouse owned companies. But yeah, I was really happy that, that I, I was, was there and <laughs> that he included it in there, that mm -hmm. Jocelyn included it in the article. I was really happy about that. I, I was too. And I, th th to us, it was a big deal. I mean, it, it really was. And well, you know what, though? When you do go national, that's going to be like on your international, head, your national headquarters, be like this little article. And you could be like, this is back in the day when nobody knew who we were. You know? Oh, it's, it's evergreen material. And, yeah. I, and, I can, and I can go back to, I have all of this content. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay. I'm and curious about this. <laughs> what? I'm very serious about where this is going. So well, and all of it. a lot of people don't even know what evergreen content is, or if they know, they have no idea how to use it in their own business. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get into it from my side because I talk about it all the time with clients from your side as a master craftsman, a tradesperson, tell people how, how you use first, whatever green content is and how you use it. I'm going to, I'm going to go on a, out on a limb. Evergreen content is the content that you, it is relevant and it's, it's something that can be recurated. It can right. be brought up repeatedly. It's not dated. You can, no, yeah. no, not at all. Yeah. It, and you can keep reposting it, whether it's every other month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Three years from now, somebody can still use the information. Absolutely. And how that applies to me will be once we start posting more videos about DIY or the the movement of the company and where we went where we started and where we are now and who we've been well, who we've networked with and who's talked about us. Uh-huh. That's all material that can be reused constantly. And and the before and after pictures is another thing. Yeah. I, I actually I could stop tomorrow, never nail another nail and I've got six years worth of material that, that of course I, I've always taken before and after pictures. That's Thousands awesome. Of images. And, and I, I remember a picture, I think you posted it last week and you were like up on the side of a house on a ladder or something. And you were like something took a picture behind you, like something about working outside my office and people that's interesting. You know, I don't work in your industry. I'm on a computer or on the phone or whatever all day. So to me, that is very interesting. And when we look at our own stuff, we forget what's interesting to other people. Mm -hmm. We're all so familiar with it. Right. And so I think that you do a good job of picking out those little details that would be interesting to anybody. Wait till you see when it launches. It's well, it, we're, 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 when it when it launches. Our content calendars are being filled up. Who's oh, cool. played with? Awesome. Um, 
It's just we've been too busy. A couple of weeks ago, I had Mohawk Matt on here. He works for Naval X. He's the um, marketing director. I don't know if you know him. And he I does. Listen. What? I listened to your episode. Oh, okay. Well, I thought it was very interesting because, you know, the way he acts on video, you think, oh, he just doesn't give a darn. He's been doing it forever. And he really just started in January. He'd been using it in his job, but he mm -hmm. hadn't been just doing spontaneous stuff on his own. And I thought his wife's um, suggestion to him to just carry his camera all around his house and just talk to it for no reason. Right. You know, to get used to that whole thing of just documenting things. Right. Things that seem like nothing, but they really are. They That they are interesting. I've actually, if I can find it on my phone, um, voice memos. You can't see it. Uh -huh. it. Just keep scrolling down. I, I I do that with my phone now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can't even yet. <laughs> but it's you there. Think of the good things when you can't do it. I'm laughing because I see um, where is it? Kurt said, "Did I miss all the good stuff?" He no. said that 13 minutes ago. So we must have been really sucking since then. That's all right. <laughs> you know, it's practice. Oh, We're working at it. <laughs> Kurt's another great guy. Bayless Woodworks. Oh, I know he is. I just uh, I just laughed, though, when I saw it. I was like, well, damn, we must be sucking right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm teasing Kurt. I'm teasing. Um, I'm going to send to everybody really anyways. <laughs> They'll be tired of seeing it. Well, you know, uh, his T-shirt, um, Sawdust is Man Glitter. Mm -hmm. Is I think that's Kurt's shirt, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I bought one of those from my husband husband a couple months ago went several months ago whenever when it first came out and i didn't tell him it was coming he just loved it oh, it's awesome. I, I know i love that so yeah but, th another great guy i mean yeah. it's you you really have to look at and who you attract and, and who the and who you maintain because you can we all can go out and get gold barred and when you get gold barred you pay for something Mm -hmm. and it just, you got ripped off. I mean, it's, yeah. that's the easiest way to say it. You, you, you got ripped off. Yeah. We try to avoid those things. And, and Donald Dotson's another great guy that I've talked to because he's, he's got a little bit of a different perspective. He's a super creative, uh, mm -hmm. was a high school teacher. So he's got a, he's got that background. Mm -hmm. And Kurt, Kurt is a, he's an intense guy. He is very, very driven. So, those are the types of things that you want to, to be around you. People that want to succeed and the people that are actually working on stuff. Donald says behind the scenes stuff is powerful and definitely so, but yeah. people are fascinated and they don't want the slick marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. They want the raw stuff so that they can feel like they're there with you. Absolutely. They really know you. Yeah. You he's know, doing some good stuff. And I remember when we were, him and I were talking about doing videos months mm -hmm. and months ago. And he's yeah. like, you just need to go do this. And I'm just like, I just don't have the time. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, be glad glad to my stuff. I'll be glad to see your content when it does come out. You know, Mark do that. Yeah. I guess that's how Mark pronounces his net last name. He also is another one that has really good content. Like today he had photographs of some of his water features. Right. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. And Great so time. that's one thing with y'all being in the industry that you are, you have such nice, beautiful work. Mm -hmm. You know, that you, I mean, you know, everybody gets sick of looking at marketing stuff and websites and stuff. That's most of the stuff, you know, that I have through my companies like that. Um, so I get tired of, you know, I feel like oh, everything is so old. <laughs> Y'all have really interesting stuff. You know, yeah, I know, you know, um, one thing that I've really appreciated with the team and with getting to know people like you and Greg and with, um, Smurf, all of you guys, um, is that, you know, my husband retired in 1990. And then when we moved back to Virginia in the early 2000s to be close to my mom. Now, Virginia is a big military state, but not where I'm from. And I moved back yeah. to my hometown. Um, it's like just north of Raleigh, North Carolina, at the bottom of the state, very mm -hmm. rural. And I didn't realize how much I missed the military community, you know, because even when he was retired, we were still in Jacksonville. We were still, you know, in and out of the bases all the time. My son's godparents lived there. They were, they're Navy, you know, mm -hmm. and it's 
when I first met him, we first got together, I almost felt like going to the base was almost like being on a college campus. <laughs> because it's like everybody's part of the same thing, you know? Right. And I just thought that camaraderie was really cool. And I didn't realize how much I had missed it until I started helping Racing for Heroes. And through that, you know, got involved with more veterans and started meeting all you guys. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy that I'm, you know, getting to meet so many military families again. Well, it's, it's fun. I, I, the, the interesting thing about it was for a long time, I, I it didn't forget I was in the military, but it, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't part of my everyday anything. And that's how Tom was. Yeah. And, and it's he, not, wasn't proud that he was meant in the military, but he'd been in for 26 years. It's all he'd ever done. And when he got out, he's like, I want to do something different. Right. You know, I don't want to be a beltway bandit. I want to do something totally different. And it's almost like he made this conscious split, except we did still live in the military community. So, right. you know, I could still go to the base and the, you know, the godparents and all that. Um, but, you know, all these years later, I'm like, wow, you know, I realized how much I especially really missed it. But I know he, I know it's made him realize it too. And, I think I might have told this story another week, but when we were in Daytona for the race in February, we went out to dinner one night and Mike Evok, who is the founder of Racing for Heroes, you know, we're all sitting there eating. And then Tom's 14 years older than me and I'm a lot older than them. So, you know, <laughs> age difference. So they were asking him all this stuff and Greg was there, Smurf was there. They were asking him all this stuff about the ships that he was on because they're all decommissioned now, Midway and <laughs> seriously, Midway, right. America, and stuff like that. And so they were talking about it. And Mike's like, Tom, you forgot one of them. And Tom's like, What? What did I forget? And he goes, The Mayflower. Tom's like, Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, he just loved it. Damn it. You know, you miss getting razzed like that you know mm -hmm. it's that whole jabbing back and forth and everything so there's there's a commonality there and and the people that that know me i mean I, i'm a fact of the matter guy okay this is what happened this is what happened how it got there i don't care yeah it, it, the collateral <laughs> damage whatever whatever it is yeah. because this is what we have to deal with your story your excuse I, don't care this needs right. to be fixed and the the military and the veterans that that are now i'm surrounded by understand that and yeah. yes and that right there that's that's a tactical advantage over the rest of them right yeah. there because yeah. all that bullshit that goes into trying to make that relationship mm -hmm. is gone yeah you know? Yeah, you already cases. know how to communicate. In most cases. You already know how to communicate. You right. know, you have that commonality. It doesn't matter which mm -hmm. branch of service or anything. No, your feelings don't get hurt instantly. Right. You know, and if you feel like something went the wrong way, and, and in some in some of these relationships they do, you either say, hey, dude, I wasn't really thrilled with that, or you just say, you know what, dude, I've got 10 others waiting in line. Yeah, yeah. Well, when are you going to roll your content out? We wanted to roll it out first of the year. Um, when you say we, you and your me. wife, you and, oh, you and you. Me and oh, me. So your split personalities. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> one guy that's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And the other like, no, you don't have time. Okay. Yeah. I have one of those too. Yeah. It was, it's, it's just basically a time thing. January, we opened up our, our office. Mm-hmm. And at that point, we were going to, we, we call it internally, we call it Vet Builder 2.0. Yeah. And it was basically a clean slate. I cleaned all of it off. The toxic, everything gone. And this was going to put me back into the field. And at that point, the processes of the company needed to be mm -hmm. to a point where we, I could hire someone in the office to take care of this stuff. And we did. And we've there's two of us in the field again. And... That and that's where it started to change, and the the, the effects started to happen because I was taking I was taking back my brand, and Good. but the problem with that is is all I would have turned into now is a is a content curator. Um, that 
Yeah. Yes, but but you know, content, like you said, once it's in there, it's gold. Yeah, you know, I've got years. I've got ten episodes of the podcast named and ideas done. That's been done. A, um, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, that's right. it's it's late. It's like we'll be eating dinner tonight. Um, <laughs> Tom's like, is the microwave gonna bother you? Right. You know, so if y'all hear the microwave, sorry. <laughs> the, the content's there. And, you know, what I do during the day is uh, LinkedIn has those LinkedIn courses. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've seen that you post that you've done. So those are worth it. Oh, absolutely. I've seen that you post those and I've never taken them. I'm like, well, dang. And see, that's another you thing know. about following people. You learn from them. I Because I never thought to take any of them. But now I see you take them. I'm like, well, shoot, maybe I should go check those out. I think I've done 20 of them. Wow. I'm averaging about five and a half hours a day. Mm. But see, here's the difference, though. When I'm doing drywall work for a week, yeah, <laughs> running electric, I can listen to that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other part about it is, is the information's the information's the same, Lisa. It's it's all the same. You right. Know, you know about SEO, the SEO stuff. Now you may say it different than the other guy, but at the, at the end of the day, you're still looking at Google Analytics. You're right, still it's still the same thing. Yeah, still the same thing. Yeah. So it's the repetition. It's the repetition. So yeah, you, you start to pick up more, and of course, in a situation like myself, that we were, you're, I didn't want to be a, a. When I came out, when I when I decided that I was going to be a face of something, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that I did my homework. Yeah. If you said what's evergreen content, I can answer you that. You'd be like, it's a Christmas tree. Well, I am Captain Christmas, so that would that would uh Oh really? Oh, that's right. I saw y'all at that Christmas store the other day. Mm -hmm. Oh, you 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 don't know about Captain Christmas? We're gonna have to talk about that. Uh -oh. Oh, no, really? I don't. Mm, it's a, it's something I've been doing for like the last eight years. That you dress up like Captain Christmas? Oh no! It's a it's a it's a Facebook page. It used to be on my page, oh. page, but now it's it's grown to something bigger. It's uh two weeks leading up to Christmas. It's a it's the most obnoxious amount of Christmas you've ever seen in your life. Oh well, see, I don't think I I don't think I was connected to you last. Mm, no, no. I think I probably met you like right before Daytona. Yeah, it was. So and now I have that to look forward to. Oh, it's people hate it. you. Either hate it or you love it. But the thing is, if you hate it, that's cool. Send it to somebody else so they can hate it. Yeah, you know, that's right. You're going to the shit out of them. And <laughs> you know what? That is the best thing for people to either hate you or love you. If everybody's like, man, it's okay, then nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. You got it. Well, you I've had so much fun talking to you. I've had you for almost an hour, and I feel bad because your wife is probably ready for dinner, and you got to go cook, right? Oh, we're having toast tonight. Oh, okay. We both had big lunches. Toast. <laughs> but I have enjoyed talking with you for so Absolutely. much. It's really been enjoyable. And I want you to come back after you get your content count. When you roll it out, maybe you can come back and we can talk about what you did or whatever. You know. Absolutely. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Have you um, ever used software that your customers can upload their own testimonial videos? Have you tried using that? No, not yet. Because there are there are things out there like that that are cheap to use, right. and it's like they can go upload their own, and it's a great way for you to get testimonials for other people where it's easy for them and easy for you. So right. that's something. And and if they don't want to show themselves, it doesn't matter because they can, since you're doing something that's a physical product, usually you know they can hold their phone out and show it. They don't have to show their faces. Right. I've got, great, I've got a great audience. Uh, they're great people. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't just couldn't say anything about them. Yeah. I'm great people that, that, that come to our page. Well, I've enjoyed talk, talking with you Me so too. much. Willow. It's so nice. And I look forward to getting to talk again. And we got to get more. Huh? Reach out anytime. Okay. And we got to get more of y'all's gang on here, too. So yeah. any, any of the other people any of the other people in the group, you know, part of the team, whatever. They don't have to be part of the team. What I want is people on here who can talk about topics of interest to any entrepreneur, whether they're in their industry or not. And all of them have a great story. All right. 
And in a few weeks, Steve Sims will be on here. The really? Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I'm going to be on his podcast Monday. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah. See, yeah, that's, awesome. See, that's one of those things. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'll be on his podcast Monday talking about my book, Boomer Cash Out, which I wrote the other year, but talking about how I, yeah, so talking about how I um, get business owners to understand how they can use technology in their own business to make it more valuable and marketable to sell for retirement. Because right. most business most business owners don't know that only a third of businesses ever sell. And the ones that do sell for half of what the owner thinks they're worth. Well, we'll see. And what that to make it even worse, the average business owner has 85 to 90 percent of their net worth tied up in their business. Right. And you're like, oh, my God, the business is the only thing I own and it's not going to sell. It's either going to be worth zero or half of what I think it's worth. Right. So, you know, it's no, it's like people don't want to buy a fixer upper house unless they enjoy fixer uppers. And if they buy the fixer upper, <laughs> Talk to me before you do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if they buy the fixer upper, they're not going to pay top dollar. And so people need to understand that businesses now are fixer uppers if they don't already include web based technology and everything, you know, not just social media, not just website, but things that make it easier to operate, like you talked yeah. about client relationship management, all kinds of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, my cousin actually owns a landscaping company in Georgia. He's not my client. We, we you know, we're just, I, I didn't even, I know he owns a landscaping company. I didn't even know he was doing this. And I saw the other week though, that his wife finally got him to start using a SAS for him to do his invoicing, estimates, quotes, everything. And he had been one of these people Now he's way younger than me, but he was still one of these people that he was like pencil and paper. He, you know, he kicking and screaming and he would spend at least a couple hours a night, two to four hours a night. And they have a little kid and mm -hmm. she finally got him to, to do, to start using the system. He saves an average of 20 hours a week and yeah. business topped a million dollars after now it would have gotten to that point anyway but there there's no doubt in my mind that he had an inflection point that he reached it faster once he was able to work on his business instead of in it right so and you and I are talking about stuff like that and so in a few weeks he's going to be on this talking oh, yeah, about yeah i don't know i told him i don't want him on here yet i want to have a few more of them because i just started you know so i want to have a few uh, more uh, so I just want to practice guy? Come on. No, no, I just don't want him to be one of the first people. You know, I want to. No, you're not one of the practice guys. I'm the practice guy. Damn it. No, you're not. No, it's like people like you have to build up the audience so that when he comes on, there is an audience. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Have him, have him talk to me. Or maybe five years from now. No, I'm just joking. No, he, he, call you. he's going to come out in a few weeks. I just don't know yet. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Um, hey, Alicia. Oh, she said, who doesn't love Christmas? I love Christmas. What? I don't like going to those Christmas stores in July, but... <laughs> But come Thanksgiving, I'm all about Christmas. That's all I want to do. Well, you know, downtown here, we're trying to deal with, with the issues of the closing down of the restaurants and all those guys. So yeah. Christmas in July with the downtown market, which is a yeah. a great business that's got all these businesses under one roof. It was fantastic. Yeah, the, the local theater showed Elf, uh, Elf the, the movie on, you know, outside. It's been a really, really cool experience. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, but I'm with you. November. <laughs> yeah. We're well, good. we just did, and I'm you and I could keep talking forever, but speaking I have about that problem. with huh? I have that problem. Oh, me too. <laughs> speaking <laughs> about that though, with the COVID shutdown, um a shop local marketplace that, that my company that we developed mm -hmm. four, six years six years ago. Um, one of the counties in the ten county region that developed it, was able to use it right after the shutdown started to do a matching gift certificate sale. And so they let businesses in their county sign up 
to sell gift certificates. And if you, for every 10 or 20 or whatever dollars you spend on a gift certificate, you, if you spend $10, you got a $20 gift certificate. Right. So businesses with, they sold out in less than two hours, $44,000 into the hands of small businesses in this very rural county and Absolutely. customers saved 22,000 because yeah. they got twice the money and it wasn't just like shopping and stuff. It was like childcare centers and things mm -hmm. like that. So there are a lot of cool things, you know, that, that communities can do, but yeah, they're going to really have to use their imagination when that time comes, if they're not able to do it. Well, I sent it over to you, our gal, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, you knew about it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. sorry. You know what? That's a great thing about networking. You just told more people about it. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. It's your show. You can say whatever you want to. <laughs> well, Especially well, so, the practice guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, but let us know what happens with your town with the Christmas thing, because you never know. Some of us might want to come up if, if they're able to do it. It sounds really fun. Yeah, I, I do a lot locally. Uh, and, and that's and that's fun. Well, they're lucky to have you. That's well. Well, I'm trying to convince them of that. Oh, I'm sure they know it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Whitlow. Thank you, and we'll we'll talk soon. Okay, and thanks everybody. And for thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah, you're the practice guy. I know. <laughs> I know oh, oh, Smurf is going to be on next week, y'all. Smurf's going to be on talking oh, about podcasting. Yes, I almost well, forgot. Perfect. Yeah, him and I are going to do a follow-up, a year in review, because I don't know if everyone knows this or not, but I've been the top podcast on his show for the last two years running. Well. I now have to, yeah, I know. I now have to share with one of you. pants. I got to share, but but I'll still take it. Okay. No, that's awesome. But yeah, so Smurf's going to be on here next Thursday at 7 to talk with us about podcasting. Perfect. Or me. I'm my split personality. Or oh, right. me like that. Yeah, what somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk to you later. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye. See y'all. Thanks.